Hello and assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Kashif Kamran and I welcome you to the day three of the advanced audit and assurance practice to pass webinar for December 2019 exams being organized by ACCA Pakistan. Now the agenda of the day three today uh, is to focus on the question number two of the exam paper. Now just like the previous two days uh, where the focus was on the question number one on the day three today I'll be focusing on the question number two of the exam paper uh, which is a very important question and I'll be exploring the untouched areas from the question number two uh, which I have not considered in my previous webinars available. Now this day three uh, will give you a deep insight uh, of the question number two and will make you realize that what is basically the mindset of the examiner when the examiner is making the question two of the exam paper and you will get deep insights about what sort of preparation you should be doing for the question number two of the exam paper so let's let's start on with this insightful uh, session on the question two and let's do a critical analysis of the question number two of the exam paper just to have an understanding of what exactly you should be doing when you're preparing yourself effectively for the second question of the exam paper now something which is important now i'll be looking at these three um, question twos and all recent papers. I'll be looking at the question two of the September 18 exams. I'll be looking at the question two of the December 18 exams and I'll be looking at the question two of the June 19 exams. These are the question two since the format of the paper was changed. We all know that the paper format for AAA uh, was changed in the September 18 exams and since September 18 exams there are a total of three questions in exam paper. We've already done the question one yesterday. We are now focusing on the question two. So we are looking into three recent papers because before September 18, uh, if you go before September 18, you will see there are five questions in the paper. But then from September 18, the format of the paper changed. And in the format, there are total three questions to be attempted. All are compulsory. One of them has been done yesterday and we're doing the second question today by taking into account the three latest paper where the question number two is available. Now, the recommended articles, uh, how you should be preparing yourself for the question two, and I'll make you realize uh, th through my session today that how important these articles are when you're preparing yourself for the second question. The first article, is uh, completing the audit. The second article is evaluation of misstatements. The third article is the new audit report. And the fourth article is the exam technique article part five, which is on the audit report. And these, this exam technique article will be shared with the day five resources. But the other three articles have been shared as the resources for the day three and all of you must have got these resources or you can download these resources from the uh, handout section of the webinar. Now, four articles, must to read articles, if you want to have a better preparation of the question number two. So completing the audit, evaluation of misstatements, the new audit report, and exam technique article part five on audit report. These are four fundamental articles and I'll make you realize why these are four fundamental articles when you're preparing yourself for the second question because you need to understand at what point of audit or at what stage of audit uh, the question number two is set. So let's unfold the question number two and let's see how these articles can contribute towards your success in the second question. Now for the question two, uh, which is of 25 marks, how much time a student should be spending on the question number two? 
and we got the formula of the time spent from the day one of this webinar and I've been using that formula very consistently on the very first day and then on the very second day and I'll be using the same time spent formula on the third day for the question number two which is worth 25 marks stage of audit at which the question is set because if you don't realize the stage of audit at which the question number one uh, question number two is set you will not be preparing yourself effectively and you will have no idea what sort of topics can come in the question number two but if you know the stage of audit at which the question is set then automatically you are better prepared for taking on the question number two and you will be knowing that what the examiner can ask you within the second question and the last thing topics examined what sort of tap topics are examined within the second question so let's explore the answers to the three things the time spent uh, stage of audit at which this question is set and the topics examined now the time spend formula is the same uh, which I defined on the day one 25 minutes multiply by 1.95 and I hope all of you know from where this 1.95 has come from or else you need to see the recording of the day one to see from where 1.95 has come from so 25 minutes into 1.95 minutes per mark we have a total time of 48 minutes and 75 seconds to do the question number two. Now we know that out of this total time, uh, the reading and planning time has to be one fourth and the writing time has to be three fourth. So from the 48 minutes approximately, you take one fourth as your reading and planning time for the question number two, which is 12 minutes. And then you have the writing time and that writing time is 37 minutes, which is the three fourth time. Now, so we have the question two, right? Uh, which is worth 25 marks. And when you multiply the 25 marks with 1.95 minutes, you get a total time of like 49 minutes to do this question. And from the 49 minutes, you have 12 minutes for the reading and planning time, and you have 37 minutes of the writing time, right? You have 25 marks for the question number two. So you have 25 marks in the question number two, and from the 25 marks, you have 49 minutes to do it. And 12 minutes of reading and planning time, that's quite a lot. If you see the length of the question two, that's not a very big question. So within 12 minutes, you're gonna have a very good reading and planning time. And 37 minutes when you look at the uh, question two is a very good time to do it. So you need to fit this question within the stipulated time because one of the critical success factor of the AAA paper is that you need to complete it if you want to pass. If you come out of the exam hall with an incomplete paper, now that's a big challenge. So your first barrier should be to complete a paper. And that is how you can complete the paper, right? With the proper time management, where one fourth of the time is spent on reading and planning and three fourths of the time is spent on writing. So that is the equation uh, for the second question of the AAA paper, the time spent. Now comes a more important question the stage of audit at which the question two is set the question number two of the AAA paper is set at the completion and reporting stage see this stage yesterday and day before yesterday uh, when I was looking at the first question we know the first question is set at the planning stage and even the first question can ask you the stage where you accept a new audit client. Now, when you're looking at the question two today, the question two is set at the stage of completion and the question number two is set at the stage of reporting. 
so at a completion stage and at a reporting stage now what exactly exactly happens at the completion stage of the audit or what exactly happens at the reporting stage of the audit because if you have no idea of what major activities take place at the completion and reporting stage you will not be having the holistic view of the question number two so let's see what can be a holistic view of the question two and a holistic view of the major activities major activities which goes into the completion and reporting stage the first one review of the working paper file we know the most important thing which happens at the completion stage of the audit when the audit is in the finalization stage is the review of the working paper now you must have seen many times uh, a typical question which comes on evidence and where the where the examiner says you are a manager and you are reviewing the working paper file what evidence will you expect to find in the working paper file this is a very typical question right in the triple exams and all of you must have seen this question in the past paper which asks you being a manager you are reviewing the working paper file and what evidence you expect to find in the working paper file now I have covered this question in my previous webinar multiple times and I'll be giving you the links of the previous webinar where you can go down and solve this question so you need to see the previous webinars for review of the working paper file because this question has been done so many times in my previous webinar I have given the complete breakdown of this question I have given the complete marking scheme of this question and I've given a complete analysis of this question that how the question is set on evidence and when you are reviewing the working paper file at the stage of completion what and how you write the evidence so that's one major activity right which gets examined in the question number two the next one at the finalization stage communication of matters to those charged with governance and that's so important what sort of matters will you be communicating to those charged with governance when you're finalizing the audit now imagine within the audit there must be several problems several issues uh, there must have been weaknesses in the internal control systems or there must have been an accounting issue that the management is not recognizing something properly so at the finalization stage you need to accumulate the problems you identified during the course of audit and you accumulate the issues you identified during the course of audit and at the finalization stage you communicate these matters you communicate these matters to those charged with governance and this is an examinable part of the question number two that the examiner can ask you to identify and explain the matters which you should be communicating to those charged with governance and we have seen this question in the june 19 exams the very recent one in the june 19 the examiner did ask a question in the question number two that what matters will you be communicating to those charged with governance so at the finalization stage this is a very important communication and if a student have no idea of this communication or the importance of this communication you're not prepared well for the second question so either it could be the review of the working paper as an activity at the finalization stage or it could be the communication of matters to those charged with governance at the finalization stage then look at the number three and and, and i'll be covering this communication of matters to those charged with governance today even though i've covered it previously but this is an emphasizable area uh, i have done evidence so many times that i'll not be touching upon evidence but at least i'll be touching upon communication by looking at the june 19 paper in my session today number three ethical professional and quality control issues arising from an engagement quality control review undertaken at the completion stage now i think you must have seen this question so many times a regular feature of the triple a paper that the the question two says you are an engagement quality control reviewer or you are an engagement quality control manager and you are performing a review and in the review 
there must be many ethical issues many professional issues and many quality control issues which you must have identified so we know there is a typical question which comes at a completion stage of the audit when there is a quality control review being performed and through the quality control review many issues have been identified and the examiner asks you to identify and explain those issues and then recommend a safeguard or then recommend an action so a typical question on ethical professional and quality control issue uh, which is uh, identified at the completion stage of the audit and again this is a question which i've done so many times in my previous webinar so you can explore my previous webinars i'll be giving you links of my previous webinars where you can see the demonstration of the answer for ethical professional and quality control issues which arise through the um, engagement quality control review then another very important activity which happens at the completion stage is the evaluation of misstatements now obviously during the course of the audit uh, you must have identified many misstatements uh, you must have identified many accounting misstatements and as an auditor you are very concerned about misstatements you must be concerned about what is the impact of the misstatement on the audit report so a typical question which comes on evaluation of misstatements have come so many times in the past paper and I'll, I'll make you realize even though i've done it in my previous webinars but I'll, I'll do an example today even that evaluation of misstatement is such a typical question where in the exam paper you get the misstatements and you need to evaluate them and you need to evaluate the misstatement whether it is material or whether it is immaterial and you need to evaluate the misstatement for its impact on the audit report so this is another activity which takes place at the completion and reporting stage that you need to evaluate the misstatements and, and i'll try focusing on this today and the communication with those charged with governance and then the final reporting stage a typical audit report question because the question is also at the reporting stage so getting a typical audit report question and you must have seen the past papers uh, are flooded with reporting questions you see the past papers from june 15 december 15 2016 2017 2018 and you'll find so many reporting questions and i've covered this so many times reporting so many times in my previous webinar so a typical question on reporting i'll not be doing in this question because i've done it so many times in my previous webinar and i'll give you the link of that uh, quality control issues i've done so many times in my previous webinar i'll not be touching upon them working paper file and a review of the working paper file i'll not be doing that because i've done it so many times so ideally i'll be looking at the communication of matters to those charged with governance and ideally i'll be looking at the evaluation of misstatement and any other requirement which comes in question two when i unfold september 18 when i unfold december 18 and when i unfold june 19. so is everyone clear about the types of activities which do take place at the completion stage have you ever wondered have you ever thought about the types of activities which takes place at the completion stage from an examination point of view and if you have an idea about the types of activities which takes place at the completion and reporting stage are you better prepared to handle the question too uh, if you see my bullets you can get a question on review of the working paper in the question number two you can get a question on communication of matters in the question number two you can get a question on ethical professional and quality control issues in the question number two you can get an evaluation of misstatement as a question in the question number two and you can get a typical audit report question in the question number two so should you know the holistic picture of the question two because for most of the time the student believes that the question two is only a reporting question so is everyone clear that a question two is not just a reporting question rather it is a completion completion and a reporting question so anything can come right in the question two not just reporting even completion so we need to understand the stage at which the question number two is set right now just before i go more deep inside 
uh, into the question number two and more deep insight into the completion and reporting stage and make you realize the importance of completion and reporting stage by taking on the past papers one final thing which i need to discuss the types of activities and types of questions i've done in the previous webinar i'll not be repeating them so i want to give you a link of those previous webinars now review of the working paper file uh, is one of the activity uh, which do takes place at the completion stage i just mentioned that and in my previous webinars you can see here i have covered them i've given you two links of my previous webinar and you can explore these two links to watch these two webinars and be very effectively prepared on evidence so if a typical question comes on review of the working paper file and the evidence you should be writing in the working paper file i've covered this question multiple times in my previous webinar this is the question right and this question have been drilled so many times in my previous webinar so you can explore this question and the marking scheme of this question and how to do this question which has been uh, in front of you as the very first bullet so if you want to explore the question comment on the matters and you want to know what matters are or you want to know the breakdown of the matter or you want to know the marking scheme of the matters you have to go and see my previous webinars and if you want to see how to write audit evidence and how we explain audit evidence to the examiner then you need to see my previous webinars for this particular question so i'll not be touching upon this question within my session today the next ethical professional and quality control issues i've covered them so many times in my previous webinars i've given you the previous links of the webinars here you can go down explore these links and be better prepared on a question on ethical professional and quality control issues you want to know the marking schemes you want to know how to write it you want to know how to identify the issues everything has been covered in my previous webinars so i hope you will have a you will click these links and you will explore these videos and you will go through them and you will take your effective notes and then start to practice questions on ethical and professional issues so is everyone clear with this that I'll not be touching upon the areas uh, which has been done and delivered in my previous webinars from the question two, so that this webinar gives you something additional something more than what has been done in the previous webinar the last thing reporting issues typical question on reporting I have done so many times the typical question on reporting. I have done the reporting questions so many times. You can see the links here. In almost every webinar I do prior to December 19, I have covered reporting as a fundamental area. And I've given you some hyperlinks of my reporting webinars, which you can go and watch. I've covered each and ev every aspect of a reporting question which comes in AAA whether it is evaluation of misstatements i've covered that whether it is uh, multiple reporting issues as a question i've done that whether it is a critical appraisal of the report i've done that so i've done every type of question in my previous webinar so uh, i just need a feedback from your side for all the topics in the question number two which i have done previously i'll not be spending time today on those topics rather i'll be spending time on topics which have been untouched from the question two so that from the previous webinars and from this webinar you have a you have a hundred percent definition of the question two is is that clear with all of you so this webinar plus my previous webinars right will give you a perfect definition of the second question so i have given i have given you the hyperlinks right of my reporting webinars I've given you the hyperlink of my webinars where ethical and professional issues have been covered and I've given you the hyperlinks where I've covered evidence so I hope everyone is sound and clear on that so we are exploring more issues today and we are exploring uh, a very critical analysis of the second question today in the webinar so that you have a very clear definition of the second question okay now let's before i start my practice of the second question uh, let me make you realize the importance of the completion 
and reporting stage. Right. Now, if I take you to the website where the technical articles have been put in by ACCA for AAA, You can see this uh, exam technique article right in front of you. The very first one, the very first link on your screen, exam technique for advanced audit and assurance part five. Uh, I recommend this, this article today that you have to read this article so that you are very good on reporting and you know what your examiner expects from you on reporting. So this is a must to read article. The very first one exam technique for advanced audit and assurance part five okay then you go down and you can see this article here evaluation of misstatement such an important article so that you know at the completion and reporting stage how do the auditor evaluates the misstatements because you identify the misstatements during the course of the audit right but how you evaluate these misstatements you should know them there are questions and questions and questions in the past paper on on evaluation of misstatements and if you want to be good on that you need to watch my previous webinars and then more importantly you need to read this article okay then you go down look at this article Completing the audit. Such an important article. If you want to know as a student what exactly happens at the stage of completion, I, I have no idea. Have you ever read this article? If you read this article completing the audit, you will be amazed to know the definition of the completion stage of audit. And if you want to have a sound definition of the completion stage, you want to have a good definition of what happens at the stage of completion then you need to read this article so this is a very good article on uh, the activities which takes place at the completion stage of the audit so do explore this article completing the audit then you go further down there is an article here uh, which is having a title uh, auditors report to those charged with governance. Now, this is what I was discussing with you today that in the second question, the examiner expects from you that you should know communication, communication with those charged with governance. And if you read this article, auditor report to those charged with governance, you will be amazed to know what sort of matters, what sort of matters the auditor communicate to those charged with governance. So see, there is a support available, but I have a serious issue with students that they don't explore this. They don't go and visit these articles. They don't read these articles. If you want to be very good on in AAA, I normally suggest that articles have to take precedence over the textbook. You can read textbook for those areas where the articles have not been written. But where there is a fundamental article, you should read the article because that's the examining team article and the examining team has to set the paper. So I hope you realize the importance of these articles. I have been recommending uh, articles on day one, then day two, and today I'm recommending more articles to you. I hope all of you are making a list of these articles and you will be ensuring that you will read these articles. Right, so wherever you find an article, read the article over over the textbook. And if, if you think there is a topic of which there is no article, then obviously you need to go down and read the textbook for that. So these are fundamental articles, right? And then see the last one, examining evidence. Now, a lot of times the students have issues about how to write evidence in the exam paper. Have you ever read this article, examining evidence? Have you ever gone through this article examining evidence? Uh, if I can get your feedback, how many of you have ever read this article examining evidence? 
if you read this article you will be amazed to know how to write evidence so please you still have good time before you enter the exam hall 2nd of december right is your exam paper and you have so good time to read these articles and if you want to make a if you want to assure that you are successful in the december exams for triple a you need to read these articles because this these articles will open your mindset about the question number two and these articles will open the mindset of anything anything which comes in question two you can do it you you know the examiner even test the knowledge right so if the examiner test any knowledge from the articles what will you do you you should be prepared for that right so these are articles which you should be going through uh, some of the selected articles i have already given you as my resources of day three if you see my day three resources which have been shared with you you will see some of the selected one have already been shared and rest you can take from the acc website completing the audit uh, that is must and i thought i should share this with you because i don't want any compromisation on this article you need to read this article completing the audit then you go down through my handout of articles you should be reading another article here which is evaluation of a statement must must to read then you go down this article and you find another article the audit report this is much to read article audit report if you want to know the fundamentals of audit report if you want to know uh, the structure of the audit report if you want to know the knowledge of the audit report then this particular article is very important so i've recommended you so many articles over the website and i have included some of them in my handout so that at least you have the downloadable version of them and you can go through and read through these articles right so these are fundamental articles to prepare you for the question number two and that's how you should be preparing them with okay now that's bringing us one step closer to the start of the practice for the second question and that's also bringing us to the word file now now day three word file and everything which is written on this word file will be shared with you over the whatsapp groups uh, and you should be participating effectively in those groups to get these files okay now what is what we should be doing question number two and insights of the question two now when we look at the insights of the second question we know this question is set at the completion stage. Completion stage and the reporting stage. And the examiner has given you the support. If you just look at the completion stage first, the examiner has given you so much support on the completion stage. You want to be good on completion stage there is an article which says completing the audit completing the audit right there is an article audit report to those charged with governance there is an article examining evidence there is an article evaluation of misstatements there are so many articles the examiner has written just on the completion stage and then there is there are so many articles on the reporting stage what examiner expects from you from the reporting stage the exam technique article part 5 exam technique article part 5 on report uh, the article itself which I've shown you and I've shared that with you in my uh, Articles for the session today the new audit report The new audit report So you have so much support on the question too And if you read these articles mentioned on your screen some of them have been shared with you some of them I've shown you over the website of ACCA and if you if you make a habit of reading these six articles you will be so better prepared for taking on the second question and the knowledge that is needed 
from the for the second question right so completion and reporting stage articles that's one thing in terms of insights of the second question now i want to explore with you the completion stage a bit before i start on with the exam practice Okay, if I take on the practice questions and then connect that with the completion stage, uh, the very first practice question uh, we are doing today to make you realize something is the question from June 19 exams, right? This is the question in front of you. And this is a question from the very recent paper uploaded on ACC website, uh, which is basically uh, June 19. And in the June 19 exams, this one, the first requirement of the June 19 exams, question number 2A, was about a critical appraisal of the report. And I have covered the critical appraisal of the report so many times in my previous sessions that I'm not touching upon it. So you can watch my previous webinars and you can then do this question as your self practice for critical appraisal of the report. So that is the requirement number 2A. You can see the requirement 2A says that you have to critically appraise the extracts of the draft audit report and you have 10 marks out of the 25 marks. And this is the requirement which I, I have been uh, consistently doing in my previous webinar. So then look at the B requirement of the question two from June 19 exams. And this has a very important requirement which I need to do with you. It says from the information provided above recommend the matters which should be included in eddie and company report to those charged with governance and explain the reason for their inclusion eddie and company is the audit firm right so examiner is asking uh, recommend the matters which should be included in eddie and company report to those charged with governance and explain the reason for their inclusion what matters will Eddie and company include in their report to those charged with governance? Not, not to the shareholder, right? The question is not on the audit report to the shareholder. I hope everyone is picking that. The question is on the matters which should be included in Eddie and company report. To the shareholder? No. To those charged with governance and explain the reason for their inclusion. And we have 15 marks. And we know in a reporting question, everything is worth one mark. So recommend the matters which should be included and explain the reason for their inclusion. So every meta, every recommendation of meta will give me one mark. And every reason, every reason will give me another one mark. So which matter should be included in a report to those charged with governance and why I should be including those matters. Now, have you ever thought about that this is where the article exists that the examiner is asking you in the question number two of the june 19 exams question number two of the june 19 exams part b which is for 15 marks the examiner is asking you recommend the matters which should be included in the audit report to those charged with governance and explain the reason for 
their inclusion. Why will you include it? Now you know that there is one audit report which goes to the shareholder, right? If I can get your quick answers, uh, let's let's be interactive. Uh, do you know there is an audit report which goes to a shareholder? Yes, and uh, you get a question on audit report to shareholder, right? In the exam paper, right? Over here is the examiner asking us the audit report to shareholder. In this question, is the examiner asking us the audit report to shareholder? No, the examiner is asking us the audit report to the those charged with governance, which is which is also known as a management letter. You must have heard this word management letter somewhere in your double A paper audit and assurance paper that uh, as an auditor we do write a management letter uh, which is a report uh, which is a report to those charged with governance which is basically the report to the directors of the company. So recommend the matters that should be included in the audit report to those charged with governance and explain the reason for their inclusion. Now you go back and see this article which I was just recommending you. See the see in front of your screen the very first article. Can you see the title of the very first article? This is such an old article. Audit report to those charged with governance. Such an old article. And the examiner asked this in the June 19 exams. That you need to you need to recommend the matters which you which you should be communicating in the audit report to those charged with governance. Can you see the title of this article? And now can you see the requirement of the June 19 question? So uh, are, are all of you amazed to see this? Are all of you amazed to see this? The, the title of the article and the requirement of the question June 19. And have you realized, have you realized within a minute the importance of reading the article? Right, so if I click this article, audit report to those charged with governance, if I click this, the article opens, and then in this article, it tells you, this article tells you the matters to be communicated. Can you see this big heading here? And if you know this article, and from this article, you have read this paragraph, matters to be communicated, Examiner is giving you examples and examples and examples of matters to be communicated. And now when you see this question of June 19, which says recommend the matters which you should be communicating to those charged with governance, isn't isn't it the easiest question in exam paper? Do, do you realize this is an easiest question? Yes, the audit report to those charged with governance is also known as a management letter, right? Now Examiner is saying recommend the matters which you should be communicating to those charged with governance. And that's exactly the title of the article and that's exactly where the examiner has written an article and such an old article. I think this is like three, four years, three, four years old article, such an old article. So if you know these matters uh, from the examiner article and you can adapt them to case study can you have a good answer to write for 15 marks if i know the matters from the examiner article and i can adapt them to the case study will i be able to write a good answer for 15 marks if i can get your answers to this quickly So have you realized the importance of this article now? So I hope everyone will be downloading this article today, right? Once the session ends down that that is the audit report to those charged with governance. Now see what what examples the examiner is giving us in the article. See the examples. The first example the examiner says the overall approach and scope of the audit including any limitation on the scope of the audit. So in in the report to those charged with governance you will be telling 
any limitation on scope of the audit if they if there was any limitation during the audit on the scope you will be telling this to the management number two accounting policies that could materially affect the financial statement if you think there was a wrong accounting policy you should be telling them to the management any wrong accounting policy you should be telling that to the management if there was any scope limitation, you should be telling the scope limitation to the management. Number three, adjusting adjustments arising as a result of audit procedures. Any adjustments? If you want to pass any adjustments, the debits and credits. So you will be telling the adjustments to the management. Number fourth, material events or uncertainties which could jeopardize the going concern status. If there are any going concern issues, you will also be communicating the going concern issues through this letter. Number fifth, disagreement with management. If you have any disagreements with management, you will also be communicating those disagreements to uh, the those charged with governance. Any look at the number second last. Any expected modification to the report. So if you if there is any expected modification like you want to issue a qualified opinion or you want to issue an adverse opinion. So any expected modification to the report, you're also communicating that to the management. And lastly, any weaknesses identified in the internal control system. So any weaknesses you identified in the internal control systems, you should also be communicating them to the management. See how many examples, almost seven examples given by the examiner in this article. And then in the June 19 exam, the examiner put you in a question and recommend the matters which should be included in the audit report to those charged with governance. Now, when you take the knowledge of the matters, matters from the article, the article is saying that these are the matters. Number one, let's quickly write them down and then connect them with the case study. The number one matter coming from the article was a wrong accounting treatment. A wrong accounting policy. Number two, scope limitations. Number three, any adjustments. Number four, any going concern issues. Number fifth, any disagreements you have with management, any disagreements. Number sixth, any expected modification of the report expected modification of report and number last any weaknesses in the internal control systems isn't that easy to remember for exam paper and when the examiner gives you a case study on the matters to be included in the report to those charged with governance do you believe the examiner will give you anything out of the seven definitely so if you know these seven Will you be able to identify the matters to be communicated to those charged with governance from the case study? Some of them, some of them will be in the case study, right? But but you need to justify, explain the reason for their inclusion. Why will you be including them? So it's not just identifying the matter to be communicated, but it's more importantly to explain the reason, explain the reason for their inclusion. Then only we'll get the one mark. So I hope everyone is sound on the article and the examples given in the article of the uh, situations you should be communicating to those charged with governance. Right, one mark per per mark here. Right. So if you look at the marking scheme here, the marking scheme is one mark per valid meta one mark per valid meta so at least you're writing uh, one mark per valid meta plus one mark for reason so that that is how you will accumulate your 15 marks right so one mark for the meta and one for one mark for the reason why you would be including it in the report to those charged with governance right so it's the marking scheme is one right one and how much time you have to write it 15 marks multiplied by 1.95 minutes how many how much time we have to write this 15 marks answer if i can get the quick answers from the 
students okay 29.2 minutes and out of the 29.2 minutes how much time i have for planning my planning time is 7.3 minutes and how much time i have for writing my writing time is 21.94 minutes so quite a productive time right to link the article with the case study okay let's read the case study right let's identify what are matters within the case study and how close they are to the article written by the uh, examiner so is everyone uh, sound on the article and has this encouraged you to read this article so is everyone encouraged to read through this article such an important article right now let's read the case and let's see what are matters within the case which we should be identifying okay i'm reading from here and let's see uh, uh, what matters should we be communicating to those charged with governance your firm eddie has asked you to perform an independent review of the working paper of taylor which is a listed entity and has been an audit client of your firm for last 10 years the audit field work is almost complete and as part of your review you have been asked to advise the audit team on drafting of the report to those charges governors so you have been asked to advise the audit team on drafting of the report to those charged with governance so in the exam it is very important to read right are we writing a report to the shareholder or we are writing the report to those charged with governance a lot of time the student just look at the word report and they conclude that this is a report to the shareholder should you be reading the complete sentence to identify the report is to the shareholder or the report is to those charged with governance taylor company is a discount food retailer which operates 85 stores nationally the financial statement for the year ending 30th of april recognized a revenue of 247 million profit before tax of 14.6 million and total assets of 535 million you know why why the examiner gives you the numbers to identify the materiality so if you want to identify the materiality or if you want to comment on the materiality then for materiality we should know that the revenue is 247 million profit before tax is 14.6 million and the total assets are 535 million okay now let's read the next paragraph to identify the issues after a rapid period of expansion uh, 20x9 has been a year in which taylor company has strengthened its existing position with the market and has not acquired any additional store or business so everything is going smooth so far right the company's draft statement of financial position for 20x9 include a property portfolio of 315 million all of which are legally owned by the company so they have a property portfolio of 315 million which are legally owned by the entity in the current year the company has chosen to adopt a policy of revaluing a property so that's fine the company can choose to adopt a policy of revaluing the company has a choice whether to recognize them at cost or to adopt a policy of revaluing its property portfolio so during the year they've chosen to adopt a policy of revaluing its property portfolio so that's a right policy nothing wrong with that uh, the ies 16 ies 16 gives you a permission to uh, record your properties at the revalued amounts for the first time and this is reflected in the draft figure for 20x9 so the company has changed the accounting policy and this has been reflected for the first time in the draft figures the audit work on property plant and equipment including testing a sample of revaluation eddie and company requested at the planning stage that independent external valuation report should be made available to the audit team at the start of the final audit visit a number of these documents were not available when requested and it took three weeks for them to be received is this, this the first issue that uh, a number of these documents were not available when requested and it took three weeks for them to be received by the audit team 
So is this the first issue I should be communicating to the management that it took a lot of time for us to get the documents? Uh, obviously, uh, this must have resulted in the delay of the audit or it must have resulted in the inefficiency of the audit. So do you all believe that a number of documents which were requested, uh, it almost took three weeks for the documents to be received. So should this be taken as the first issue? Now let's find the issues from the case. The issue from the case, number one, I'm making just a sketch answer. The first issue we got from the case is um, the documents uh, requested from the management almost took three weeks to almost took three weeks to be received by the audit team to be received by the audit team now that uh, why why will you communicate right we, we are not categorizing the point into the categories above right the category above is just uh, the the seven over here is just an example given by the examiner but should we just stick to the examples given by the examiner or should we adapt so we got the first example from the case study that the documents we requested from the management almost took three weeks to be received by the audit team i, I hope everyone agrees this is a point which we should be communicating to management but why the reason the reason why we should be communicating is to the management is that this must had cost inefficiencies. This must have caused inefficiencies in the audit. This must have caused inefficiencies in the audit and must had delayed the audit work on revaluation. So do you, do you all agree with the why here? that if if the auditor is getting evidence on a late basis right the the problem with students is that you you look at these seven examples in the article will the examiner give me the marks to uh, categorize the example from the case with the article am i getting marks to tell examiner that the first issue relates with scope limitation will i get marks for that or will i get marks for identifying a matter and telling why it should be included a lot of students uh, in the live session is doing what that you're just classifying the issue among the seven we got from the article a am i getting the marks for telling examiner that where it is falling or am i getting marks for writing why i should be communicating this to the management so is everyone sound on the very first point do everyone realize that the first point should be communicated if i can get your answers quickly do all of you realize this first point should be communicated to the management and the reason why? Right. Let's let's go down reading the second one. No, there is there is no need to give headings, right? There is no need to give headings. And if, even if you want to make headings, you should make headings from the case study rather than you're learning the rote learn headings. Yes, so anything, anything which hinders the audit work, right? Anything which affects the audit work should be communicated to those charged with governance. Okay, let's read the case further. I'm reading after after the red line where I ended the red line, right? So uh, no, 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 no need to number them, right? I'm just using a sketch answer. So that's the reason I'm numbering them. Uh, you need not to number them. That's not the way of writing the answer in AAA. I'm just numbering them because I'm just trying to identify the number of points. Okay, I'm reading after the red line. The audit working paper also identified that on a review of the non-current asset register, there were four properties. There were four properties with a total carrying amount of 11.1 million, which had not yet been revalued and were still recorded at the depreciated historic cost. Is this the wrong accounting treatment? Because when we revalue, we revalue the class of asset. So when I was revaluing my properties, should I revalue every property? Do everyone recognize this accounting rule? That when we revalue, we revalue the entire class of asset, right? So 
there were four properties which had not yet been revalued and are still being recorded at the depreciated historic cost so is this the wrong accounting treatment we should we should have revalued the entire class of asset so how much is the value of these four properties 11.1 million dollar so can we identify the materiality of 11.1 million dollar uh, the total assets of the company the total assets of the company was 535 million so can you divide 11.1 million with 535 million to identify the uh, materiality of these four properties okay that's 2.07 percent okay thank you so 2.07 percent is the materiality of the 11.1 million dollar worth properties which has not been revalued so i'm getting my second point uh, four properties uh, which were not revalued okay let's remove the numberings because you get confused with everything i do on the screen the first one a document requested from the management almost took three weeks to be received uh, and why it should be included i got one mark for the matter and one mark for the reason two marks now the second issue four properties which were not revalued my first point to the examiner four properties were not revalued and my first point to the examiner would be i'll find the materiality of these four properties and that is 11.1 divided by uh, how much was the total assets 535 million perhaps right and the percentage i got was 2.07 percent so hence it's material so how many marks will i get to identify is it material or not what's the rule of thumb in triple a paper whenever you do the determination of materiality how many marks do you get for determination of materiality in across the paper in across the 100 marks paper yes one mark so you get one mark for this then you will tell that this is a wrong accounting treatment you will tell this is the wrong accounting treatment and that's the reason that's the reason you should be communicating it to those charged with governance because the as per the accounting standards you there is no number for putting the name and the reference number of the accounting standard so as per the accounting standards the entire class of properties should had been revalued so this is a wrong accounting treatment and that's the reason that's the reason that you should be communicating it to the management now when you believe there is a wrong accounting treatment which is material which is 2.07 percent of the total assets and you're communicating it to the management because it's material do you also need to communicate to the management the adjustment necessary one mark one mark for the wrong accounting treatment do you believe that i should also be telling management the adjustments which are necessary see see this point you got from the article any adjustments wrong accounting treatments so should i be telling management what should be the adjustment adjustment necessary should also be communicated should also be communicated telling tcwg telling tcwg the, the correction the correction needed or the adjustment needed or the adjustment needed so do you believe your non current assets your non current assets are materially misstated because four properties four properties were not revalued so the non-current assets are materially misstated for that reason and that's that's the reason you're asking management that there is a need to adjust them there is an adjustment necessary wrong accounting treatment and it has a materiality see you're gaining your marks I, I'm, I'm not solving the full 15 marks right you need to see the examiner answer for that but i'm just giving you a clue that if you read the article and you do this exam paper you get you get more confidence yes i i did mention that the entire class of property should be revalued when you're telling management 
the wrong accounting treatment. So you're also telling management why it is the wrong accounting treatment, right? So you see this line over here. Okay, let's go back to one more example and cut short this question. You, you, you can do the rest yourself. The next paragraph, the audit supervisor review of Taylor company board minutes identified that the company has renovated a car parking facility. So the company has renovated a car parking facility of its 17 stores, which has resulted in a significant increase in customer numbers and revenue at each of these locations. So the car parking facility has resulted in more customers visiting you and it has resulted in more increase of revenue for the business. The total cost you have incurred on renovation is 13.2 million. The total cost of the renovation is 13.2 million and has been included in the operating expenses for the current year. Now, do you believe this is an accounting issue? Because the renovation, the expenditure, the expenditure on the reno renovation because it has resulted in an increase in the customer number and it has resulted in the revenue increasing. So for that reason, should it be should it be expensed out? No, it should be capitalized. So should we capitalize it? Because the renovation of the car parking facility has increased the number of customers and revenue. So is there a future economic benefit? So has the company done it right? Has the company done it right? No, so is it a wrong accounting treatment that, that they have expensed out? So do you believe uh, currently because they have expensed out? They've expensed out. So currently the expenses are overstated. They have expensed out. So currently the expenses are overstated and the profit is understated. And more importantly, your 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 assets your non current assets are understated because this should have been capitalized right so your non current assets are understated is is that true so so many things we need to tell management right just because of this now 13.2 million has been recognized as an expense so we should find the materiality of 13.2 has been recognized as as expense so we should find materiality towards profit it has been recognized as expense. So how much is 13.2 uh, million as a percentage of profit before tax? Because it has been recognized as an expense So 90.41%. So that's quite a significant, right? So that means if uh, your profit, your profit can increase by $13.2 million if you recognize this as a capital expenditure, right? So currently your profit is understated by 13.2 million dollar or your profit is understated by 90 percent. So that's quite a significant uh, misstatement to be reported to management and and they have to be recognized as an asset. So how much is it as a percentage of asset? And it's 2.47 percent of the asset, right? Because it has to be recognized as an asset there. So let's let's write this as a final point and you'll do the rest of the question yourself then. Okay, the final point you're writing from this question. Uh, renovation work. And the first thing you should be telling under the renovation work to management is that 13 is the materiality. The materiality is uh, 13.2 million dollar. Uh, versus the profit is equal to 91% and uh, the materiality uh, is 91% and uh, versus the total assets the materiality is 2.46% so hence this 13.2 million dollar is material right then the next thing uh, we should be telling management is the wrong accounting treatment wrong accounting treatment to the management and not just telling the management the wrong accounting treatment but also telling why 
just like the above answer I wrote, right? So you're not just be telling that uh, the the revenue expenditure is a wrong accounting treatment. It should have been capitalized, but why it should have been capitalized? Because there was a future economic benefit. The number of customers have increased, right? So wrong accounting treatment, but also tell why it is wrong to score your mark. One mark, one mark for materiality. And then you go down and you tell management the adjustment, the adjustment necessary. And you tell management what and what should be adjusted, what should be adjusted and how. So you will tell management what should be adjusted and how. You should be adjusting your expenses, right? And you should be adjusting your assets. And that adjustment will increase your profits. So what should be adjusted and how will give you one mark. So renovation work is a wrong accounting treatment which you should be communicating to the management and then you're telling the management this is something material. Right, so that's that's the way of doing these questions, right? When your examiner asks you, now look at this question and give me a final feedback. Recommend the matters which should be included in the audit report to those charged with governance. So was everyone clear about matters should be included in the report to those charged with governance? Was was the question understandable to all of you? And did you did you got these matters from the case study? And you read the article, right? The article was giving you examples of seven matters. And then you need to tell the reason for inclusion. So does it question does this question sounds easier if you have the back background of the article and then you read this case study and you identify the methods and you get an idea. Okay, what matter should be communicated to the management and why? And the marking scheme of one one mark for everything you're writing and justifying. Okay, now just to give you a last example because you might get confused when you do it at home. Look at the last line here. Uh, we, we read till the red line. Now where I ended the red line, read the line after it says the audit file includes a working paper recording discussion with management which confirms that the capital expenditure authorization forms have not been completed for this expenditure. Is this an internal control weakness? Capital expenditure authorization form has not been completed for this expenditure. Is this a deficiency in the internal control system? Should I be communicating deficiency to management as part of my report to those charged with governance? So can you gain marks from here? And now look at the last paragraph because you will get confused in the last paragraph. You are aware that your firm has intended to replace the current partner Brian Oni uh, with Philip who is Eddie's other specialist in food retail. Unfortunately, Mr. Campbell was taken ill earlier in the year and will not will not be available until the next year audit engagement. As a result, 20x9 is the eighth year in which Brioni Robertson has acted as an engagement partner. Do you believe that if the engagement partner is acting for eighth year, this, this gives rise to a familiarity threat? This gives rise to an ethical issue, right? But what was the reason of this ethical issue? The reason of this ethical issue is that the partner, you, you were about to replace the partner and you were, you were replacing Brioni with Philip. But unfortunately, Philip fell ill. And for that reason, in the absence of Philip, uh, Brioni has to work for another year. So you will tell examiner this is a familiarity threat, but you will then also tell examiner that this is permissible because the, the partner who had to take on fell ill. And because the partner who had to take on fell ill, automatically, this became permissible. So code of conduct code of conduct says uh, when there are extraordinary situations, the engagement 
partner can even work for nine years. I hope everyone knows the rule seven years that the engagement partner should step down after seven years should change after seven years. But if there are extraordinary circumstances, the engagement partner can continue to work for nine years. So do you believe there is an extraordinary situation here because Philip Philip fell ill? If you can give me your answers. No, we need to discuss the ethical matters right with those charged with governance. We need to inform those charged with governance that because our partner fell ill, so we are taking Bryony for the next year as the eighth year rather than rather than the management criticizes you and the management asks you why is Bryony working for eighth year? Is it better to tell management before rather than the management allegates you and tell you that your partner is working for eight years? So is it better to communicate to the management the ethical issues before? rather than the management allegates you and tell you that your partner is working here for eighth year. So which is better communicating ethical issues before to the management or waiting for the management to communicate you to uh, you the ethical issues. So if there is an ethical issue, uh, you should be communicating um, it to the management so that the management knows that as an audit firm you know the ethical issues and as an audit firm you are you are taking proper safeguards for ethical issues now the problem is uh, rote learn students you will say that in the article there were only seven examples and there was no ethical example in this article and a rote learn student will say no how can we include the ethical issues in the report to those charged with governance because when we read the article there was only seven issues now that is a big problem with rote learn students that they only stick to things given in the article the basic purpose of the article was that if there is an issue you need to communicate the issue to those charged with governance now ethics is also an issue if your partner fell ill and for that reason you need to take on your existing partner for eighth year. That is also an issue. Now, if you think this article is sufficient, the article we just read, this particular article we read, this one, which had the title Auditor Report to Those Charged with Governance. Auditor Report to Those Charged with Governance, and you just read this article and you get examples from this article. And you don't read my second article I recommended you. Did I recommend it a second article to be read completing the audit? And you go down and read this article which I've shared with you in the session completing the audit. And when you read this article completing the audit. When you read this article completing the audit and you go down. And in this article, you come across a paragraph which says. Look at this paragraph in the article. Completing the audit. Which says. At the conclusion at the conclusion of the audit a meeting will usually be held between the auditor and the management and those charged with governance. So at the end of the audit there will be a meeting between the management and those charged with governance sorry between the those charged with governance and the auditor and in this meeting you will present the report and in the report you are telling many issues to those charged with governance. Now see the examples given given in this article. Some of the examples are coming from the previous article, but can you look at this example? Here. Which I've just highlighted the details of the ethical matters that may need to be clarified with the client. Now you just read one article and go to the exam hall in the second article which was published later. This article is saying that when you communicate matters with those charged with governance and you have a meeting with those charged with governance apart from the other matters which are given in the previous article 
you should also be communicating the ethical matters that may need to be clarified with the client so do you believe you need to clarify Brioni working for eighth year with management do everyone agrees with that should be should be clarified to the management why Brioni is working for eighth year because the management can ask me why why Brioni is working for eighth year he should step down after seven years so should I make a clarifying statement to the management through my report that why Brioni is working for eighth year is this everyone getting my point so will you just be reading the previous article I recommended or will you also be reading this article completing the audit to get a more comprehensive list? The other examples in this article is as same as the previous article, but this this example is added and this example becomes very important. The details of the ethical matters that may be clarified that may need to be clarified with the client. So now can my list becomes eight here should i write the eighth point in my list ethical matters which need to be clarified with client so that becomes my eighth meta so two articles right two articles is now giving me the list of eight so there were some concerns of student that why should we be communicating ethical matters to client is, is everyone clear why are we communicating the ethical matters to client so that we can tell client why Brioni is working for eighth year because we know this is a familiarity threat as a firm we know this is a familiarity threat but we are very proactive we're very proactive to tell you that Brioni is working for eighth year just because the Philip fell ill So is everyone clear on this last paragraph now see this for one final time and I'm exiting from this question You are aware that your firm had intended to replace a current partner that was so good right your firm intended to replace a current partner But unfortunately the the replacing partner fell ill and for that reason the Bryony had to work for eighth year So we should be telling this to the management that because of that reason we are not replacing the partner and we will be replacing the partner in the next year for this year Bryony will continue as the engagement partner so if there is an ethical issue you should be informing that to the management so the management knows the auditor is independent and the auditor is safeguarding the independence so do you believe auditor needs to be independent and needs to be proactive needs to be proactive in its independence Rather than the management allegates your independence, you should be more proactive in your independence. Is everyone clear on this question? 15 marks. And is everyone clear that this is a very fundamental requirement which can come in the question number two? Matters to be communicating to those charged with governance. And is everyone clear on the examples of matters from the articles? Marking scheme of this question and how you should be identifying a matter and telling examiner why the matter should be included in this report to those charged with governance so will all of you be reading this article completing the audit so that you know what sort of activities happen at the completion stage of the audit this one and will you be reading the other article which i just shown you on the website of acca which is the auditor report to those charged with governance so is everyone sound on this So how how has how has this first session been of the day three so far? Have have you realized some important things from the day three uh, session so far in terms of the question two? Have you got some insights uh, which you had no idea of uh, before you entered the session today and attended it as a live as a live session today? So I hope you got some clues uh, to prepare better for the second question and some clues where you can refine your second question, right? So I hope the the uh, the urgency of reading the article is very important uh, and uh, taking your notes taking your notes from the article is very important and then attempting then attempting uh, the past papers the question tools of the recent exam papers is very important 
so I'm wrapping up my uh, June 19 question now so in the June 19 question the part B was something where I need to emphasize on so that's the one I've done but the part A, which is about the critical appraisal of the report, because I've done it in my previous webinars, and you can go and watch the recordings of my previous webinar, I've already given you the links. So you can see how to do the critical appraisal and how to identify uh, the marking scheme of a critical appraisal, right? So June 19, question number two is now done and is now complete. Right now, I'm going off to a break. Post break, after 15 minutes, I'll resume back uh, with two more questions uh, which is from September 18 exams and December 18 exams and we'll see what's new in those questions which needs to be polished and refined and post break even I'll make you realize the importance of articles and if you know the articles you can be so well prepared for your exams coming up in December so just before I go off break I'll be looking forward to your feedback of the first 90 minutes so I know what have you gained from the first 90 minutes of the session and we're going off to a break now and we'll be resuming back in 15 minutes so that's approximately 7 50 p.m. Uh, Pakistan standard time uh, the session would start in and into the last part of the session then I'll be working on the two other questions so how has been the session so far uh, just quickly drop in your comments and suggestions and uh, if any of your questions uh, during the live webinar has been left unattended you still have an opportunity of dropping these questions to the whatsapp group I hope all of you are on the whatsapp groups and you can communicate with me over the whatsapp group and I can better respond to your questions on the whatsapp group right so there is an opportunity for you even after this webinar gets to an end and this whatsapp group have been made for your facilitation so that your answers could be responded in a more effective manner because that's not possible within the live session so uh, i'm going off to a break and see you back after the break uh, resuming question two from september 18 and december 18 exams uh, keep dropping your feedback throughout the break and I'll I'll be responding to your questions after the session ends today Okay off to a break and be back in 15 minutes
Okay, welcome back after the break. Uh, we were discussing the second uh, question uh, from the AAA exams, uh, which focus on the completion and reporting stage. And that's uh, what I will be continuing further in the remaining time of the webinar today. Now, so far, so forth, we have uh, drilled down uh, many aspects of the second question. And uh, from these three questions, I have done the June 19. And uh, over the last uh, 90 minutes or so, uh, the focus had been on the importance and the urgency of reading the uh, articles. So let's, let's go down with the further analysis now of the question two and the untouched areas. Now, just before I proceed to my next question, uh, I just want to make you realize with one very important thing here, which is when you look at this article completing the audit, I'm recommending you some uh, sections of this article, uh, which I would prefer that all of you read very carefully, right? When you go down this article, look at this first section review of the audit files and evaluation of misstatement. This is such an important area which is examinable in AAA because we know there's a question which comes on review of audit file and the evidence and the evidence you should expect to find. And that is a question which I've done in my previous webinar, but this is an area which you should be reading from the article that what exactly happens when the manager reviews the file or what is basically the evaluation of misstatement. There is another article which itself has a title evaluation of misstatement, right? So if you read this section, that's good. Then you go down, leave, leave aside the final analytical procedures, subsequent events and going concern. We, we know questions comes on going concern and examiner's uh, favorite area, going concern and examiner has put a lot of questions in the past paper on going concern. So just to realize uh, the importance of subsequent events and going concern at the completion stage of the audit because the auditor do uh, evaluate the events after the balance sheet date or do evaluate the going concern at the finalization stage of the audit. So going through the subsequent events and reading reading the mind of your examiner about subsequent events and what the examiner expects from you in terms of subsequent events and going concern procedure can be very crucial so will you be developing your mindset from this article about subsequent events and the examiner expectations about subsequent events if i can get your answers quickly and about the going concern so will you be drilling this paragraph subsequent events and going concern procedures and knowing what your examiner expects from you? See, it is very important that we should read the mind of the examiner. If you're not reading the mind of the examiner, we are far away from success. And I hope over the two days and now being the third day, I'm, I'm trying to make you realize that it is so very important that you read the mind of your examiner and the only way you can read the mind of your examiner is to read the examining team articles. And if you read the examining team articles, you can know what your examiner is expecting or can give you in the exam paper. So this is another paragraph. Read through this. Uh, written representation, such an important area. A lot of times student uh, uh, write written representations in exam paper, but you should know the fundamentals of written representation. You should know uh, when when the auditor takes written representation, in what situations the auditor take written representation. So you can explore this area. Uh, there can be questions in uh, later exam settings where the examiner can ask you some knowledge about written representation. So you should know that as well, right? And finally, this one audit clearance meeting, which was like a report to those charged with governance. And we're just reading it prior to the break that what sort of issues you should be communicating to those charged with governance. So you should have a fair idea from this article. So a very important article and a must to read article. So uh, I hope you get the realization of that. Okay, now moving towards the practice questions. The next one is from the December 18 exams. December 18 exams. Let's see December 18 question number two. Uh, what is the unusual part? 
which needs to be drilled in the live session today. Now, when you look at this question two of the December 18 exams, this question number two is full of numbers, full of the balance sheet and the income statement. See, so far only numbers. And you go down, there are some note numbers coming. You know the examiner gives you the financial statement and the notes to the financial statements, right? And then comes the requirement. This is the question two, right? The first requirement. 10 marks. Using analytical review, where appropriate, so where appropriate, evaluate the matters which cast which may cast doubt on Delhi company ability to continue a swing concern. So you need to evaluate the matters which may cast doubt on the Delhi company ability to continue as a going concern. So over here the focus is on the matters matters which cast doubt on Delhi company ability to continue a swing concern and you can use the analytical procedures as a matter because there might be some ratios uh, which may cast doubt on the going concern status. There might be a, a ratio that the company's current ratio is going down. We know a lot of ratios can demonstrate the going concern status of the company. So examiner is saying using analytical review where appropriate, not not every time, but where appropriate. Evaluate the matters which may cast doubt. 10 marks and I will need to give you the marking scheme of that. Then in the second part, the B part. See, this is a question I have been drilling in my previous webinars and I'll not be touching upon this again this time because it has been done in my previous webinars. Explain the evidence in respect of the cash flow forecast which you would expect to find in your review of the audit working paper. What evidence will you expect to find in the file? See, the question says, you would expect to find in your review of the audit working paper. So what evidence will you expect to find in the review of the working paper in the in respect of the cash flow forecast? Such questions have been drilled so many times in my previous webinars on evidence and from your review of the file, what evidence you expect to find? And you were just reading this article right over here. See this heading realize the importance of the setting now from the article review of the audit files now the question is asking what evidence will you expect to find in uh, in respect of the cash flow forecast when you are reviewing the files now how you write evidence what's the marking scheme of evidence this has been an area which has gone through in the previous webinars and i'll not be touching upon them so you want to know how much you will write how will you write what you should write if you have all those questions popping up in your mind then you have to refer to the previous webinars right which the the, the link has been included in my presentation but review of the audit file becomes very important now just a realization this article which i just made you realize here see this article in front of your screen examining evidence examining evidence if you click this article, it will tell you so much about evidence. Though it's a very old article, but so many times the student have a confusion. What is the difference between a procedure and an evidence? Because in P7, AAA, you also get to write procedures. You also get to write evidence. So many times the student keeps asking, what is the difference between a procedure and evidence? Though I have made it clear so many times in my previous webinar. But is there something written by the examiner in black and white? This article? If you explore this article on evidence, it is also giving you a difference between a procedure and an evidence. Can this make your life easier as a student? And you go down this article. It, it also tests you. It also tests you which of the following are procedures and which are evidence. It's also giving you a question that the, the examiner wants to test you that from which of the following is a procedure and which of the following are the evidence and then the answer is given down. So then comes an important heading identifying appropriate audit evidence. Now when you are writing evidence in the working paper file and you are a manager and you are reviewing the working paper file and you want to write an answer in the exam paper about the evidence identifying the appropriate audit evidence. 
now if you read through this article you will have a mindset that mindset will help you in answering this question for nine marks explain the audit evidence in respect of the cash flow forecast which you would expect to find in a, in the review of the file so audit evidence in respect of the cash flow forecast so will you be reading the articles on evidence will you be reading the article on completing the audit and will both these articles help you to write an answer for nine marks and my previous webinar so I hope you start to realize that whatever the examiner asks you is not out of the articles is within the articles but if you go to the exam hall with less articles prepared with no articles prepared obviously you will come out of the exam hall saying it was a very tough paper it was a very difficult paper it was a very challenging paper remember no paper is difficult provided you have prepared yourself very very properly okay then the last part of this question c explain the possible reasons why directors may wish to exclude their disclosures and evaluate the possible implication for the audit report see in the 25 marks question 10 marks was on going concern no reporting nine marks was on evidence no reporting and you go to the exam hall saying question two is a reporting question question two is a completion and reporting question after the 25 marks 19 marks have been allocated on completion six marks is coming on the report explain the possible reasons why director may wish to exclude the disclosure why why will the director exclude the disclosure and evaluate the possible implication for the audit report if the director is not giving a disclosure what is the implication for that on the report now we get a typical reporting question implication for the audit report so imagine is the whole 25 marks on reporting we just did the previous question as well so will you change the mindset that the whole 25 marks comes on reporting no out of the 25 marks certain marks are allocated to the completion stage and certain marks are allocated to the reporting stage is, is that clear with every one of you okay now let's drill in the answer there are three parts I'm only doing two of them uh, the evidence part you will do yourself but let's have a proper realistic plan of the answer okay this is December 18 so let me start on this from a fresh page where we can drill in the answer okay December 18 question number two now for 25 marks now when you look at the requirements of this 25 marks the first requirement a is about the going concern indicators the examiner was asking us to identify the methods which may cast doubt on the going concern matters which may cast doubt on the going concern and we know when whenever whenever the examiner asks you the going concern matters each going concern matter each going concern matter is worth two marks each going concern matter is worth two marks so that's that's the marking scheme for going concern matters right in exam paper then the next requirement of this question was B evidence evidence in working paper file with regards to cash flow forecast what evidence we will have in the working paper file with regards to the cash flow forecast this was a nine marks question and we know the marking scheme for evidence is one mark per evidence so one mark per evidence is the marking scheme 
So the second question was on evidence with the marking scheme. And then in the third part, the question was asking us why management would be why management is reluctant to give a disclosure. Why management is reluctant to give a disclosure and the implication for the audit report. And this question was worth five marks. So for every reluctance, for every reluctance of management you write, you will get one mark per reluctance. And for every implication you write, for every implication on audit report, you will get one mark. So that's the marking scheme for the last requirement. So is the structure ready? Now, I hope you realize the importance of planning and we had 25 marks. So we have approximately uh, 48 minutes in the exam hall to do a 25 marks question. And one fourth of the time should be spent on reading and planning. I hope you remember the rule of 1.95 and you follow the rule of 1.95. Now this is the planning I've just did. So we know the requirements. We know the marking schemes. Now the only thing left is to answer. Okay, let's make an answer sketch. I'm writing the word sketch because a lot of times the student thinks this is the this is the complete answer. So I need to emphasize this is a sketch answer. Sketch means I'm just trying to give you a mindset and then you can write the answer once the session ends in a very proper way in like a paragraph form. Okay, let's start on with the sketched answer. We first need to identify the going concern metrics, right? Uh, using the analytical procedures where appropriate. Okay, now just before I look at the financial statements, I'm looking at the note numbers. Let's see if we can identify a going concern meta from the notes. The first note says, Delhi company, Delhi company has uh, undergone a period of rapid expansion in recent years and it is intending to buy a new warehouse in uh, January 20x9 at a cost of 4.3 million. So that's good. That's quite optimistic. Nothing, nothing of an issue. Uh, the company wants to buy a new warehouse uh, in January 20x9 because of a rapid expansion. The rapid expansion is an optimistic uh, situation and sounds good. In order to finance the new warehousing facility. Uh, the company is in the process of negotiating the new finance from its banker. The application of $5 million is being, uh, the loan application is for $5 million and the loan is to be repaid over a period of four years. Now there is a risk here that the company is in the process of renegotiating uh, a new finance and they need the new finance to by the new warehousing facility. What if uh, they fail to get the new finance? Uh, if they fail to get the new finance, this will impact the buying of the new warehouse and that could cause them the problems. So the, the company is in the process of negotiating a loan and we need to be skeptical here uh, of the chances uh, they might be getting a loan. There might be something in the case study which we need to explore about the chances of getting the loan loan success or not but i'm taking this as my first skeptical point here when i'm writing upon the methods for the going concern my first meta could be the loan application and what if it fails I'm just thinking about it. Loan application and what if it's fail? Will it have any impact on the company? Uh, will it uh, dent? Will it dent the company's plan to buy the new warehouse? What if it fails? Right. This is not a question on risk. Right. This is a question on going concern. Right. So don't think about the loan application and the risk of management bias in manipulating results. This is a question on 
going concern so if if the loan application fails the company might not be getting the new warehouse if they're not getting the new warehouse that might impact their future prospects if the future prospects are dented the company might might be having some doubts on the going concern okay next number three the provision the provision of 3.5 million dollar in the year end in the year's statement of financial position relates to legal actions from five of delhi largest customers five of the delhi largest customer has filed a case against the company legal action from five of delhi company's largest customer the action relates to the claim that the company has sold cars which did not comply with domestic regulation failure to follow the domestic regulation the company could be penalized the company could be penalized by the regulator so there are two issues here one they have they are facing a legal action from the five customers which five customers the five largest customers and the second problem is uh, a claim that there have been a non-compliance with the domestic regulations so the largest customer filing the claim and then there is a non-compliance with domestic regulations both of them becomes issue uh, legal claim from five largest customers now if there is a legal claim from the five largest customers that means the customers are dissatisfied the customers are dissatisfied might result in losing customers losing customers and a future and a future fall in revenue there might be a future fall of revenue so no company no company would like the customer to be dissatisfied because if the customers are dissatisfied that is a very serious problem because the the loyalty of the customer or the retention of the customer is very important so if you are uh, if there is a chance of losing customer then that could be something very very important then the, uh, another thing non compliance with laws non-compliance with domestic regulations when there is a non-compliance with domestic regulation the company can face fines penalties and we know if the company face fines and penalties it could affect the reputation of the company there it could affect the reputation of the company uh, the market image of the company which which can affect the going concern of the company as well the market image the people the people would not like to buy cars from this company so we have a first point loan application and what if it fails we have a legal claim coming from the five largest customer which is another matter of concern then a non compliance with domestic regulations right no this is this is a going concern question right we are not determining the materialities in the going concern question so three points we need to make five points to get to a 10 marks answer right you know two marks per valid point just one more and you will uh, do the rest yourself a major new competitor has moved into dali company's market a major new competitor has moved into the market in the dali's market that sets an emergence emergence of a successful competitor or emergence of a competitor a new competitor has moved into the market so another issue uh, a new competitor and there is a risk there is a risk on losing the market share in future and might cause doubts on going concern so i've got four points you need to make a list of five continue making a list to five but every point you write needs to be explained in a paragraph explained in a reasonable paragraph justifying justifying why each of the point why each of the point will impact why each of the point will raise doubts on the going concern status on the going concern status why each of the point will raise doubts on the going concern status if the loan application fail how will it bring a doubt on the going concern status if there is a legal claim how will this bring a doubt on the going concern status and the list continues right so see i found some points from the narratives 
the narratives given by the examiner. Then you can also find the point from the numbers. See, there is another going concern problem facing this business. Now, now, now I'm coming to the analytical procedures, right? Uh, see, there is a big problem. The company has become loss making. Last year, the company had a profit. This year, the company has become loss making. And that's that's a big problem for this company. The company has become loss making. Now, from where have I identified this point? From the income statement. The company is loss making. That's another issue. The company is loss making. Last year, they had a profit. Last year, they had a profit. So that sets another concern factor. Now you can do some ratio analysis. For example, we know for going concern liquidity is very important, right? So we can find the liquidity of this company like as in uh, we have the current assets. See, we have the current assets given. Current asset of the current year and the current asset of the last year. We have the current assets here. Current assets for the last year and current assets for this year. Right and we, we have the current liabilities given under. We have the current liabilities given under. So you can find once the session ends you can find the current ratio right you can calculate the current ratio you can calculate the current ratio i think if you calculate the current ratio there will be a fall in current ratio which you can calculate after the fall in the current ratio from the last year to this year uh, it was like i think it was like 2.38 last year and this year it's one 0.58 so even the 1.5 it is a good current ratio but see there is a drastic fall drastic fall in your ability to pay is that a concern factor even the 1.58 is a good current ratio but when you compare that with the last year 2.38 there has been a drastic fall in your ability to pay so is that an is that a concern factor everyone realize the importance even though 1.58 is a very good current ratio, right? 1.58 is an ideal current ratio, but do you see the falling from the last year? And do you realize that this is important for the company to address? So see the examiner was saying, examiner was saying utilize the analytical procedure where possible. So I, I did utilize the analytical procedure, right? I, I calculated the current ratio and I linked, I linked my current ratio with the uh, going concern doubts. So it's it's not like a loan analytical procedures. You need to utilize the analytical procedure. You need to involve you need to involve the analytical procedure in your point making. So I not just calculated the ratio, but I involves the current ratio as my meta to gain my two marks. Right, so uh, I hope you can continue with the rest of the answer. I've given you a clue and I have given you the articles recommended which you should be reading. So is everyone sound on going concern? Uh, will you be reading the articles and will you be uh, exploring the answer of this question? Because GC is an important area, right? If you want to practice more questions on going concern, if I can just give you a clue here. If you want to be good on going concern, good on going concern. So what you can do, you can do these three questions. Number one, December 13. Question number five, you can do December 15. Question number two, A, and you can do this one, the one we are doing, December 18. Question number two. So these are three good questions on going concern. If you can do them all, you will be so very, very well prepared for taking on going concern in exam paper. And you will be amazed that there is so much similarity in these three questions. If you do December 13, you will think that examiner has taken a lot of things from December 13 into December 15. If you do 13 and 15, you will see examiners taking so much things from both these questions to 18. So you, you need to do practice on going concern. And I've given you the questions in front of your screen, which you should be taking as practice questions for going concern and improving your prospects. Uh, if this topic comes in December 19, you can be taking on this as a much better prepared topic. 
Right, so that's one part of it, right? Okay, moving next. Uh, I'm not doing the part on evidence. I have, you need to see my previous webinars for evidence for that. But why management is reluctant to give a disclosure of going concern? And what's the implication for the audit report? Let's, let's test you for that. Uh, reluctance. Why? Why management is reluctant? And, and what can be the implication of this reluctance on the audit report? Impact on audit report? There are so many going concern problems right facing this company and we know the ISA ISA 570 uh, which deals with going concern uh, and the IAS1 IAS1 uh, do emphasize on the need of a disclosure when there are some material uncertainties relating to going concern and this company have some material uncertainties relating to going concern being loss making and some of their important customers have left they're facing a legal case and a new competitor has new competitor has moved in so there are some material uncertainties right and we know the is one requires the material uncertainty to be disclosed in the notes to the financial statement look at this point number six here it says the point number six the financial statements have been prepared on a going concern basis that's fine and make no reference to any significant uncertainties in relation to going concern. There are so many significant uncertainties relating to the going concern which should have been disclosed. So the company is a going concern, right? However, there are some significant uncertainties and the management should have disclosed these significant uncertainties in the notes, but they're reluctant. They're not giving these significant uncertainties in the loan in the note. And you come to the B part. You have established through discussions with Dali Companies Director that they do not wish to disclose uncertainties over the going concern status in the notes to the financial stream. So the management is not giving disclosures of the going concern uncertainties, which is the requirement of IES 1, and the shareholder should know about these. But the management is reluctant, they're not giving these disclosures. Why? Why are they reluctant? What can be the reason? because uh, the, because of the self-interest self-interest of the directors do you know directors are paid bonuses on the basis of company's performance and do you believe directors have a self-interest if they disclose these significant uncertainties will the shareholders be happy with them do you all agree with my statement if i can get your answers do you believe there is a self-interest of the directors? And uh, that is very important because if they disclose it, the uncertainties, will they be getting the bonuses? Will the direct, will the shareholders be happy? Right, so the first reluctance is the self-interest of the directors. And the second is, um, if they disclose these uncertainties, this might even impact on the loan negotiations. What if the uh, the bank, we know that when you negotiate a loan with the bank, you also need to give the audited report to the bank. So uh, will it impact on the loan negotiation? So directors have a self-interest, right? So uh, if the director gives a disclosure, they will not be getting the bonuses and impact on the loan negotiations. Do you believe that? Uh, because when you when you sit down with the bank, you need to give audited financial statement to the bank and then only the bank will give you a loan. So if the bank gets to know that the company is facing some going concern problems, will, will the bank be hesitant to give you a loan? True. If I can give get your answers. Will bank be hesitant of giving you a loan if you make this disclosure? So reluctant. So there are some logical reasons, right? Why the management is reluctant to give a disclosure. But do you believe this disclosure is a requirement of the accounting standards impact on the report? When you're writing the impact on the report, the first thing you're telling is that this is required by the this is required by the accounting standards. This is required by the accounting standards that 
a disclosure of material uncertainty is given disclosure of material uncertainty disclosure of material uncertainty relating to going concern is given so the standards require right that you give a disclosure of material uncertainties relating to going concern but the management is not giving it so obviously is 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 that a breach of uh, is that a breach of the accounting standards so when there is a breach of an accounting standard the auditor has to give a modified opinion true but now there is a problem will the auditor be giving a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion which one of them They, they, this is a breach of a standard right management is not giving a disclosure this is a breach of a standard so ideally i need to think about a quali uh, about a modified opinion will i be giving a qualified opinion or an adverse opinion now the reason is i have covered this in my previous webinar as well that because the matter relates with going concern and going concern is such an important matter and going concern is the basis of preparing the financial statement that is the reason you have to give an adverse opinion if the going concern disclosure is not given you can remember this note if gc disclosure relating to material uncertainties material uncertainty is not given is not given is equal to an adverse opinion because that is such an important reason a uh, going concern is the basis of preparing the financial statement and let's let's test you if if the disclosure is not given but what if if gc disclosure is given then what will happen if gc disclosure relating to material uncertainty is given then what will happen you have exams on the 2nd of december if if the going concern disclosures relating to material uncertainty is given then what what happens in the new audit report what what will happen in the new report when there is a disclosure of material uncertainty given yes the auditor will highlight this in a paragraph and a paragraph known as m u r g c para do you know the new audit report has an m u r g c paragraph which comes after the basis of opinion paragraph all of you have exams on the 2nd of december right after the basis of opinion there is a paragraph known as m u r g c material uncertainty relating to going concern so if the disclosure is given of the going concern then the auditor will highlight this in the m u r g c paragraph and if the disclosure has not been given then you give an adverse opinion so that's just just like a revision of your going concern uh, reporting right so please revise your rules of reporting uh, a lot of students were giving me wrong answers so please ensure there is a need to revise the structure of the report and need to revise that when the disclosure is given of going concern what will happen and when the disclosure is not given what will happen so you have you should be having a sound idea on going concern because this is such an important area of the aaa exams right is everyone sound on this question the rest you need to do yourself i just need to take on the last of the three questions now september 18 just to see uh, what was uh, in that question now september 18 was the start from where the format of the paper changed and was the very first exam setting uh, which uh, had the new format which had three questions and the student had to attempt all the three questions in the exam paper and that is the very first time this question number two was set in with regards to completion and reporting stage 
let's see what's inside the question 2 of the September 18 exams. Okay, now right in front of your screen is the September 18 question. Right, this is September 18, uh, question number two. Now, this is a question which I have done so many times in my previous webinar because this is a typical question which comes on reporting where the examiner gives you some misstatements and you need to evaluate the misstatements. And now that is the reason this question becomes so important. Can you see a schedule of the misstatements given here? And you must have seen this schedule of misstatement many times in the past paper. There are a lot of questions which comes with this schedule of misstatement when the examiner gives you a reporting question. There are some misstatements and you need to discuss these misstatements with management. Uh, there are some misstatements relating to lease of testing equipment. There are some misstatements relating to legal claim and there is a misstatement relating to asset impairment. Why, why, it, why this is a misstatement? The examiner has given you a commentary below. The commentary of the misstatement has been given below and see what is the examiner asking you in terms of the misstatement. I've done this question in my previous webinar, which was September 19. So please have a look at the answer. It says, recommend and explain the matters which should be discussed with management in relation to each of the proposed adjustment. So what Matters will you be discussing with management in relation to each of the proposed misstatement. We have three proposed misstatements, right? And the examiner is asking us the matters which you should be discussing with management in relation to each of the proposed misstatements, including an assessment of their individual impact on financial statement, including an assessment of their individual impact on financial statement and on the audit opinion if the management does not make the adjustment now be very critical a lot of time student reads the question wrongly this question is asking you the matters which you should be discussing with management in relation to each of the proposed adjustment including the assessment of their impact impact on the financial statement which normally student overlook and the impact on the audit opinion is the examiner asking us to write two impacts the impact on the financial statement and the impact on the audit opinion and you come out of the exam hall by just writing the impact on the opinion not writing the impact on the financial statement will you be scoring marks no let's let's break this question and understand this question when you look at this question from the September 18 exams, even though I've drilled that down in my last webinar, just want to make a structure ready and you'll do the rest yourself. September 2018, question number two, and you look at the requirement. The requirement is broken down. Number one, the requirement asks you the matters you should be discussing with management in relation to each of the proposed adjustment proposed adjustment then its impact on the financial statements and the impact on the audit opinion let's understand the question three things within within a jumbled question matters you should be discussing with management with regards to each of the proposed adjustment. Now, just to give you a sketched answer, whenever, whenever there is a proposed adjustment in exam and you want to discuss matters with regards to proposed adjustment with management, the very first matter you need to think about and discuss with management with regards to the proposed adjustment is materiality. Is it material or not? And you get one mark. 
the second matter you should be discussing with the management is the accounting treatment you are telling management the right accounting treatment you're telling management what should be the right treatment you're discussing the treatment with management one mark then you're also telling the management that uh, there is a need of adjustment else there is a need of adjustment you, uh, you're discussing with the management that because the matter is material for example and the accounting treatment you adopted is wrong there is a need for adjustment so you emphasize right you emphasize on the need for adjustment and you take one mark now what's the impact on the financial statement the impact on the financial statement is because there is a proposed adjustment which is not reflected in the financial statements i hope you all agree with this because there is a proposed adjustment which is not reflected in the financial statement so do you believe uh, the impact on the financial statement is that something must be understated and something must be overstated is that true because management has not recognized something and that's that's the reason you're writing a proposed adjustment so do you believe for the reason of the proposed adjustment uh, something must be under and overstated in the financial statement and that's basically the impact on the financial statements so telling examiner the uh, impact on the financial statement what is understated and what is overstated and lastly what's the impact on the opinion uh, is it material is it immaterial or is it pervasive now we know if it is material the auditor will issue a qualified opinion if it is immaterial the auditor will issue an unqualified opinion we're talking about each misstatements and is it pervasive then obviously the auditor has to issue an adverse opinion i've covered the rules of adverse and pervasive pervasive and material in my previous webinar so please go through that but the examiner is asking us the impact on the audit opinion what will be the impact on the audit opinion so you need to read the case and you need to think about the impact it has to be one of them either unqualified other adverse either qualified so what are you discussing with management you're discussing with management the materiality you're discussing with management the right accounting treatment and you're also discussing with management the reason the need to adjust you're telling management because this is a misstatement you should adjust it so you're also discussing the need of an adjustment you're emphasizing you're emphasizing on management that you should adjust this so that is very important otherwise the management will not so your justification of adjustment is very important and your reinforcement of adjustment is very important so is everyone clear with the breakdown of what the examiner is asking matters you should be discussing with management in relation to each of the proposed misstatement impact on the financial statement and the impact on the audit opinion so is everyone clear with the requirement structure and i've covered this question in my previous webinar so you need to drill this question out right i've done this entire question september 18 question 2 in my previous webinar right so please have a look at the answer i've covered the issues uh, in a more detail but just want to make you realize the structure of this uh, question right just in my previous webinar right September 19 and I've given the link of that on my presentation slides even then when you look at this September 18 question in terms of the second part right, 15 marks have been allocated to, uh, sorry not 15 17 marks have been allocated to the first requirement and then in, when you look at the second requirement C comment on the ethical and professional issues and I was just mentioning that at the start of the session that even in the question 2 which is a completion and a reporting stage question you can get a question on ethical and professional issues and you got it this time 
we didn't had that in june 19 we didn't had that in december 18 but we had that in september 18 so we have done ethical and professional issues in the previous webinar you need to scroll you need to go through my previous webinars to know how to write them right so are you all realizing the importance and the depth of the question too i, I just need to have a q a session with you for five minutes if you can just be on your uh, chat box and respond to me as quickly as possible and my first question have you all realized uh, the importance of uh, the question two and have you also realized the depth of the question two have you realized the depth of the question two and is it now now tell me is it just a reporting question is it just a reporting question okay and and has this encouraged you has this encouraged you to practice all the previous question number two when you go to the exam hall for december will you practice all the question twos just three of them right but uh, even if you are attempting the previous questions, even if you're attempting the previous questions, will you be attempting uh, the previous questions? Uh, I think this topic used to come in the question five of the previous uh, paper. So you can do the previous question five to be prepared on this topic. So I hope you take a holistic view of question two, not a incomplete view of the question two and enter the exam hall because a lot of time the student only have a mindset that question number two is only a reporting question and when they enter the exam hall and they get something other than reporting they are in a state of stress they are in a state of shock and then they think that we are unsuccessful so i hope uh, with a proper preparation you can be good on to the question too so i'm i'm not just touching on the areas which have gone in the previous webinar just emphasizing on the areas which have been through now you've seen this question in front of your screen which is evaluation of misstatement and this is the misstatements and you need to evaluate these misstatements and the examiner was saying matters you should be discussing for each misstatements now there is a complete article of the examiner which is on evaluation of misstatement if i can just show you that article and realize you the importance of this article see this article and see the exam question september 18. in september 18 there were misstatements three of them and you were evaluating the three misstatements right and examiner was asking us the matters you should be communicating with management with regards to each of the misstatement including its impact on the financial statement now i will make you realize in the next five to six minutes that how important is this article evaluation of misstatement because in the question number two you need to evaluate the misstatements and a couple of times the questions have come on evaluation of misstatements right so let's see the crucial part of this question the very first paragraph of this question article says the completion stage i'm reading the first para just have be focused it says the completion stage of the audit is when the auditor reviews the work performed and consider the implication for the audit report a crucial part of this review is the evaluation of misstatements identified during audit so the examiner is saying the completion stage of the audit is all about the review and the implication for the audit report and that's what i have been emphasizing since the start of the session but the examiner says a crucial part of this review is the evaluation of misstatement found during audit so in the september 18 paper we found three misstatements and the examiner was asking us to evaluate these misstatements now then the examiner tells you the isa 450 which is basically the isa which deals with evaluation of misstatements you can scroll down and read the isa 450 so you have knowledge of isa 450 and then it tells you some of the misstatements examples of misstatements a misstatement occurs 
and the examiner has given you so many examples of misstatements so misstatement is not just a debit and credit right uh, see the examiner is saying when something is classified incorrectly that is also a misstatement when something is uh, presented inappropriately that is also a misstatement when something uh, when uh, incorrect amount incorrect amount has been recognized is also a misstatement so when a disclosure is not given is that is also a misstatement so there are so many types of misstatements right uh, disclosures presentations classification and an incorrect amount so you need to realize that then the then comes an important part specific requirements of isa 450 when you are evaluating the misstatement what are specific requirements you need to read this paragraph very carefully at home specific requirements relating to the specific requirements so if you go through this paragraph you will realize that examiner tells you the way you should be evaluating the misstatement and then you will get and then you will get a very real track answer for September 18 that when you are communicating matters with management what matters you communicate with management if you read through this paragraph right uh, ahead see examiner is saying the auditor shall communicate on a timely basis all misstatements and then the examiner keeps ask uh, writing uh, the other things about the misstatements which you need to explore upon keep going through this article then examiner is also telling us how you ask management to correct them see we were even discussing with the management in the september 18 paper that there is a need to correct them not just telling the management this is a misstatement but also telling the management there is a need to correct it and then evaluating evaluating the effect of that on the audit report if the management fails to correct it then what's the effect so if you if you can just go through this article and make your notes see the last heading that was exactly what the examiner was asking us in the september 18 paper Commu explain identify and explain the matters which should be communicated to those charged with governance with respect to the proposed adjustments so my conclusion since the day th since my previous three days including this one being the third day that each and every heading of the article is so very important if you read articles you make habit of reading articles and you explore articles and you make notes you can you can tackle every question in AAA. I hope you start to realize the importance of these articles and uh, how they connect with the exam paper. And uh, multiple times today, yesterday, and day before yesterday, I have made you realizing the same point that how important it is to connect articles with the requirements. Right now, just one final thing. When you're preparing yourself for the second question of the exam paper, when you're preparing yourself for the question two of the exam paper, what exactly is there in your mindset? First of all, uh, the need to read articles, need to read articles, recommend it. Uh, Practice all question twos, read and plan carefully, read and plan carefully, uh, allocate marks effectively, know the marking scheme, know the marking scheme, and then write a proper answer. Write a proper answer so this is all what we've done through the session today I, i've made you realize the need to read articles today i practice question twos with you and you have to continue that uh, I, I i i allocated the reading and planning time very carefully one fourth of the time 
should be spent on reading and planning and you know that every mark is one minute and 95 seconds allocate marks effectively i did mention the marking scheme across and write a proper answer three fourth time it, you have is to write the answer you cannot complain about time management if you follow this rule uh, a lot of time the student complains about time management I, I believe you are not following a proper mechanism uh, of reading and planning and writing if you follow this one fourth three fourth mechanism you can be so very effective in the reading and planning time and there should not be an issue of not completing the hundred marks paper yes you can leave you can be left with two to four marks or you can be left with five to six marks that's that's fine but if you're leaving like 20 30 marks in the paper then there is a real serious issue with you so that sets with question two now uh, what ideal questions can you practice from this ideal questions to practice now three of them has been in the session today right uh, you can practice september 18 question two December 18 uh, question 2 and you can practice uh, June 19 question 2 now we know se before September 18 there was no question 2 question 2 came in from September 18 with the new format but if you go prior to that then you have to practice the June 18 question 5 you have to practice December 17 question 5 and you have to practice June 17 question 5 sufficient if you practice these six you will have a wonderful uh, picture of completion and reporting stage so I hope you will go through these uh, six questions and prepare yourself effectively for completion and reporting stage and you will watch my previous webinars as well so that you know how to do a question on reporting right so just one last emphasize here uh, i have recommended my previous webinars to you right uh, if you can see that in front of your screen for a review of the working papers so you can watch my previous webinars for evidence the hyperlinks have been given you can you can explore these hyperlinks uh, ethical and professional issues the hyperlinks have been given you can explore these hyperlinks and reporting questions on reporting which i've done in the previous webinar uh, hyperlinks have been given right so all the typical requirements on reporting have been done in my previous webinars right so let's wrap up the second day uh, third day sorry let's wrap up the question two on the third day so and let's plan the question three tomorrow uh, i will be meeting you tomorrow uh, for the third question question three uh, which is which is a surprise package in question uh, in the triple a paper uh, question three is the most open question anything can come in question three and tomorrow you will realize the importance of question three tomorrow you will realize the holistic view of question three you will realize the importance of reading so many articles for question three tomorrow because question three is the most suspense question in the triple exams it's the most surprise question in the triple exam uh, but we need to see uh, some clues tomorrow for a better definition of the question three but i hope uh, you had a productive learning today for the second question uh, and I'll be looking forward to your feedback uh, within these last five minutes if you can keep uh, posting your feedbacks about the question about the session today and uh, your overall learnings from the question two today in terms of the day three so keep putting your feedback now just one important reminder to all of you uh, we know there is a current issue which is very important for December 19 exams and I'll be drilling the current issue, which is about data analytics uh, and very deeply uh, on the last day of the webinar, which is on Friday, the day five. And you will be amazed to have insights of the data analytics and the way you should be preparing data analytics for your exam settings in December 19, because that's, that's an untouched article yet. And there is a chance 
that the examiner might touch upon the article on data analytics i will recommend you one thing that because every day and every hour uh, for all of you is very important so if you just go to the website where the articles are kept in uh, and you just download this article prior to friday and read it would be very good see this article here data analytics and the auditor this is an unexplored article right and this is an article which is uh, which is potential for december 19 exams and you cannot just go in exam hall without reading this article on data analytics so please have uh, a reading of this prior to friday day five where i'll do this tomorrow is the day four and i'm drilling the day uh, i'm drilling the question three tomorrow which is such an important question right so i hope all of you uh, are now preparing yourself for question one and question two you have plenty of time second of december you have your exam paper that means uh, realistically you have ample time still that you sit down to study you can do wonder on 2nd of december but have a right strategy right and uh, anything left unattended uh, in terms of your questions uh, please put them on the whatsapp group and i try to answer a sample of those questions which i consider important uh, for the rest of the students as well right now tomorrow on day three when i'll be meeting you because i need to uh, day four sorry when i'll be meeting you tomorrow uh, i just want to realize some important things so you can come prepared for the session tomorrow uh, for day day four um, there are some recommended articles for tomorrow uh, if you can explore them down you can see them on your screen now performance information in the public sector and forensic accounting are the two recommended articles for tomorrow if you can explore them down uh, and uh, better prepared for the session tomorrow right and i'll be doing three question frees with you tomorrow uh, march 2 19 december 18 and september 18 right and there are a lot of questions coming from students uh, since the day one uh, asking about uh, the uh, important topics for december 19 exams I think uh, it's time uh, we should say uh, goodbye to the uh, question spotting, uh, spotting the questions, and it's it's time we prepare everything, right? Because uh, in the last few exam settings, uh, examiner has been so unexpected uh, that we cannot just uh, be selective. Uh, if you're preparing your risk, prepare all the risk, business risk, risk of material misstatement, and audit risk don't just go prepared with one risk in exam paper you you have no idea what the examiner can do so things have become very unexpected right in the last one and a half year there are four exam settings and with these four exam settings uh, examiner can test anything so better be prepared for everything so a lot of times students ask me should we prepare for business risk or should we prepare for audit risk no you should prepare for all three of them so no cho no selective studies right uh, go and study each and everything and yes on my final day I can give you some hints but uh, I would prefer that you focus on the entire structure of the AAA syllabus and that's the only way you can be successful in your exams coming up okay it's time to say uh, goodbye to all of you um, and have a nice day ahead and I'll be seeing you live uh, tomorrow for day four with the focus is on the question number three and i hope you had a productive session today looking forward to your feedback there will be a feedback form coming after the session ends today please fill in the feedback form very carefully because that's very important and please keep dropping your feedback on the whatsapp group as well i wish you all a best of luck for your exams coming up on the 2nd of december and uh, i'm signing off from the day three uh, goodbye and allah hafiz